Kenny Von Lick, you said something really interesting to me um, when we were talking the other day, and I think it's something we should really talk about. And that is something I didn't know about. And we always talk about dogs in the military. We always talk about the Belgian Malinois. We talk about the, the German Shepherd and all this stuff. But you said something that took me by, literally by shock, which was pit bulls in the military. Mm -hmm. And nobody knows these dogs, and nobody knows military dogs better than you. You've deployed more dogs. You've sent more dogs out there. I want to talk to you a little bit about this pit bulls in the military. Like, what are they used for? Did you start that? Is that something, did you put the first pit bulls out in the military? I hate saying things like that because there's <laughs> going to be someone come out of the woodwork. Oh, no, he's lying. I, I, we put them in early. And the, the way this came around is I was asked to train dogs for the Brazilian government when they had the, uh, 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 what is it called, the Pan Am Games. Uh -huh. And they brought me and a Canadian or a good friend of mine, Ross Serban, and another guy. And we went down there and we were training Brazilian dogs to protect the athletes to do what we do here okay. or anywhere else. Oh, boy. When we got there, and this was way back. Brazilians now are amazing. They've mm -hmm. really taken the ball and ran with it. But back then, the dogs were just absolute nothings. And we were expected to train all these dogs and all these handlers. Their dogs. Their dogs. You're just in, coming in as a trainer. And hot. Oh, you don't know hot. <laughs> um, and, and these dogs had no drive. Mm -hmm. And we're, I'm sitting there for a week or so begging these dogs. They're kept in metal cages that are so hot you can't touch the cage. And wow. they're inside of them. Um, so finally, I said, I called back home. I said, send me four or five of our best mm -hmm. and they made they sent them they shipped them to us and i donated them to the effort what kind of dogs were these malinois dutchies okay um, got it and what kind of dogs did they have in brazil that they were trying to train oh there was some shep you know house pet shepherds okay like rescue dogs oh it was terrible crazy. okay but they didn't know okay and the dogs weren't good but the people they got the, I think Brazil is as close to the United States as any country I've ever traveled to wow. in their work ethic, okay. their love for dogs, and they wanted the knowledge. They just didn't have it. So we did that for them, and the Pan Am Games came off without a hitch. Okay. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. And I made long-lasting friends that I actually started a kennel relationship with about four of them, and they got more dogs for me and they brought me down there every year to do seminars mm -hmm. and it pretty soon turned into where they were training good dogs to the point where i would buy dogs because they would raise puppies poor people work harder sure all right better and ethic, better ethic. Mm -hmm. and they knew how to raise puppies the right way okay they taught me things that i you know i thought you know we all think we know everything sure. uh -uh. they taught me one of the things they showed me was when they raise a litter and this may be common knowledge to all of you people but it wasn't to me they say well they watch the litter and as, as it's growing they watch the one that's taken over okay you know and mob and all the other guy they take him out or her they put him in his own pen okay now another one comes they take him out and they can virtually make most of the litter the alpha dog of that of that you know the, the working dog the one that wow. is not afraid of things is is one that's used to being out there and doing it and i've used that ever since so so you're saying that every time one dog would become dominant over the litter he's, he's out and then it would keep him and he would be a dominant keep him dog. And, and train him yeah and then another one would surface but if uh, you left him in there it's just him and everybody he's else kicking squashed. everybody's ass and nobody uh, else can ever come to the top but you get uh, him out of there another one and another one. And it's not just the males, the females. Sure. Um, oh, I, I loved it. And we, we use that to this day. Okay. So those dogs were there in for just protection? No, no. Or detection as well? No. Before the pan, before we got involved, yeah, yeah. they were, uh, they did a lot of guard, a lot of um, um, secure home security and got stuff. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, but after I donated those dogs... These guys aren't stupid. They used every one of my dogs as breeders. Right. And they began to build dogs. And they understood what their the dogs that they had there that were good dogs. Okay. So the whole thing changed. Right now, okay. you can get good dogs out of Brazil. Pit, pit bulls? No. Oh, these, oh, are, these are Malinois and Shepherds. Oh, okay, got it. All right. I got it. Okay, now in the middle of all this, all right. I'm, not, I'm down there training. You get these guys that are doing home security. And you know, they're all poor people. Mm -hmm. Love them. Poor people work harder. Salt of the earth. That's right. And... uh. They're showing up at my training with pit bulls. 
and I, I could care less what the dog is. If he's got the drives and will do the work, sure. I'm in love with him. And this guy shows up with one. He's probably nine months old. His name's Flash. Mm-hmm. And it was like some movie. I fell in love with this dog. And he had it doing stupid pet tricks, jumping over things and doing this, climbing trees, going into water and diving and picking up things. But I saw some other things. And they were just started trying to do bite work with him. I bought him. What year was this about? Can you remember? Mm-hmm. 2000s? Yeah, 90s. right in. Okay. Late, late 90s, 90s, early 2000s. Okay. Well, I bought this dog. His name was Flesh. I've got him tattooed on my arm. Oh, that's a great This picture. is him. That's awesome. He was my boy. I taught him to track. I taught him bombs. I taught him all the bite work, police bite work. He actually protected a president with me and my crew one time down in Louisiana, wow. New Orleans. Okay. Social it was a day as long. And if you told him to climb a tree, he would climb that tree. He, it's almost like he had thumbs. Thumbs. <laughs> oh, I'm telling wow. you. And he was friendly, but would bite like a freak. Mm-hmm. His nose was amazing. Um, and I had him for three years, and he died. Oh, man. Died of cancer. But from that experience with that, I kept my eyes open, and we, we'd get one every now and then, and mm-hmm. we would sell them to a police department. But when the, when the war started, um, these dogs worked for me. I owned them. Mm-hmm. They hired me and my people to right. go in there. We had more dogs in Afghanistan than the Army did, wow. bomb dogs. And a whole bunch of them were pit bulls. So you, you took pit bulls and put them into the U.S. military or, or deployed them with the military to detect bombs to protect soldiers. Yes. Wow. Now, was it any different training a pit bull to detect bombs? I know I'm, I'm sure odor is odor, dog is dog, right? Yeah. Nose is nose. But was there any thing you saw that was different about training them to go do the work than with the other No, dogs? and you didn't have to be hard on them. Like, you, you get this image that you didn't have to be hard on them. Most of them were sweethearts. Mm-hmm. Um, and, of course, we didn't get the ones that were, you know, out of control. Mm-hmm. But... These dogs love to use their nose. And as soon as we saw that, our training methods fit right with them. Uh, we don't beat on dogs. We don't, we're not hard sure. on dogs. Sure. And it was, a, it was a resource that no one was using, so I could get them. No mm-hmm. one else wanted them. But then they started seeing, people started seeing them, so I, I saw a few with mm-hmm. cops. Yeah. Um, and they're still out there with cops now. Yeah. Uh, military won't take them. They won't now. No, no. Why? No, they wouldn't then. Oh, they didn't. Those dogs were mine. Oh, I see. Okay, they worked that's right. for me, right. and those people worked for me. It's called the TED program. It's the most successful, written by the military, canine program in the military to date. We had 300 in there all over Afghanistan and never lost a soul. Wow. Never lost a dog, never lost a person. And where would you get the pit bulls from? Because everybody's going to say, people watch this. I was in rescue for a long time. Right. And I love rescue dogs. I think mm-hmm. rescue dogs are great. We've had rescue dogs. Jan, I've, I've had my own. I think they're fantastic dogs. That's I think, where I got mine. Okay. Which Flash? Yeah. Well, I got Flash from, from Brazil. Brazil. Right. You know, I bought him. Yeah. Uh, he, he wasn't going anywhere. He yeah. came home with me. But the dogs later that we were using in the war, we got them from the rescues. So you actually got them out of the shelters. Yeah. So you were able to take find the right. So what what's the secret there? Because people are going to say, and I've had people say this. Oh, you know, this dog's uh, he's great. He he could be he be a great detection dog or whatever because they just mm-hmm. think. Mm-hmm. Like, what is it? What you're looking for when you look for one of those dogs? Like, what makes that rescue gives him the potential to say, okay, I can take this dog to war. I can take okay. this dog. He can find bombs or he can apprehend a suspect. What is it? Sociability is number one. Okay, I mean, why would you take something that you couldn't trust? Mm-hmm. Because this dog's going to find bombs. He's not going to bite. He's not supposed to bite anybody. Right. He's going <laughs> to hunt. He's going to search. So first thing, social. Second thing, does he? is this his primary tool? Mm-hmm. And you tell that by, we have simple tests that we, with a tennis ball. And I right. use a tennis ball for a very scientific reason. Okay. They're free. <laughs> okay? And right. you can use anything. And I, I love these people. Oh, they, you've got to use a Kong. I love the Kong guys. Mm-hmm. Or you've got to do that. No, you don't. Mm-hmm. If they liked this rock right mm-hmm. there, you could train him. But I stuck with the tennis ball. They were free. Mm-hmm. And I could set up a standard with my trainers. And people started understanding that we would take pit bulls. So we started getting calls and people bringing them. And we do our tests. And then we put them through our training. And if they, if they follow... 
the way it's supposed to be according to us. There's a million ways to sure, do this. I, I get these people, yeah, look, look. It, there, I'll tell you, the way I do it may not work for you. Sure. But, it doesn't mean either way is right or wrong, right? right exactly. It's just what works for you. And I like the diversity. Yeah. You know, if we all did it the same, wouldn't this be some, I wouldn't be in this career. If you, yeah. My, I'd, I'd be an idiot savant. I'd leave. <laughs> right. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, I always find that too. I and mean, this is the most interesting topic. I see so many dog trainers arguing with other dog trainers. Oh. I've had, I, I don't intentionally don't bring dog trainers on to talk about training per se, but I mean, I've had you, I've had, you know, Stoops, I've had uh, you know Mike Reaver, I've Lots had of different so people. many different people, yeah. and I've never disagreed. I'm like, wow, that's fascinating. Can I cut in because my yeah. brain, I'll lose it. No, don't. I don't hate that saying that the only two two things, the three only trainers, thing, the only the thing, only two trainers can two, agree on, two or three trainers. Is that Bull, the third one? I'm wrong? sorry, yeah. bullshit. Yeah, I agree. It's absolute. I I I respect a lot of them out there, Steve. Yeah, yeah. you. Yeah, and if you don't then you're the problem. Absolutely. But I hate that saying because it tells people that we're all assholes yep. yeah. and we're not. No. You could, I can talk to you all day long. Yeah, we have. Yeah, and, and yeah. I've never met you before. Mm -hmm. I can talk to people that are in different parts of our career field. Yeah. And whatever they say, I listen to it. If I think it's smart, I'm going to steal it and put it in what sure. I do. Yeah. But this crap about we can't agree. Me Stupid. and uh, I told you just earlier, me and uh, what's his name? Um <sighs> guy on tv too oh uh, caesar milan caesar milan yeah. mm -hmm. when i had my show they put us together out in california and they, they here in they, california they, here in california <laughs> you're I'm here sorry. kenny <laughs> i'm sorry i don't know where i'm at uh but they put us together and what they wanted is for us to do some segments on sure. our show arguing well caesar and i started talking and we knew instantaneously that we're not going to do that mm -hmm. Because what he does isn't what I do, and what I do isn't what he right. does. And for me to for us to argue was just TV. Stupid. Yeah. It was stupid. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's part of the reality thing, and that you didn't do that on your show. Um, but that's the thing. When I was, they were pitching, and now I said, I said to Jan, I said, "There's a blanket <laughs> statement. Anybody who wants to do a reality show with me, I'm out. I just don't want to do it. I've yeah. got plenty of money. I've got plenty. Yeah. I've got exactly what I want. Yeah. But it's that conflict, and it, I think that's even what fuels things here on the internet. Like you see. My my podcast. Oh, they fight all the time. All the time. That's that's their whole thing. They want this back and forth, this bickering. And people in modern society, especially with the birth of social media, they love that bickering and back and forth and all that crap. And it's something that doesn't even need to be. You know, we can all, like I said, I listen to you. I listen to Stoops. I listen to these people. And I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. I, I have been it. butchered on online. Mm, sure, me but too. But you'll never see me answer it. Yeah. You'll never see me talk back to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, why what are we doing we're making ourselves as dog people look bad yeah. so if people have dogged me out on on yeah. the internet i won't even acknowledge I'll, it. I'll tell you the only thing that bugs me is when you get people and i've seen it and it's this i don't care how you train right i don't care like if you as long as you're not abusing a dog that's right right, right there. That, i'll stop that right but if you're using an e-collar cool if you're using a, a clicker cool. cool if you're using whatever that's your tool that works for you i think it's great but what I have a problem with is when somebody says, oh, Robert and Kenny use e-collars. They're cruel. They're abusive. It happens all the time, though, doesn't it? Do, it does, but yeah. I'm going to floor you. Oh, I'm going to take good. you apart. Good. Because it's not fair. And I said this before. If you're against e-collars, don't use it. Mm. If you're against, like, I'm not a clicker person. Janet loves clickers. I'm not a clicker person. Mm -hmm. So you know what? I don't use a clicker. But I'm not going to criticize you for using a clicker or an e-collar. Because if you took that clicker... And you took that clicker and mashed it into the dog's eye and took his eye out with it, you'd be abusing a clicker, yes. right? Yeah. So if you use an e-collar and you're frying the dog on the, on the e-collar, you're abusing the e-collar. Yeah. But if you're not doing either of those, use the tool to a benefit. And if something becomes abusive, I'll tell you something. The biggest abuse in the world is a person's hands. That doesn't know what he's doing. Doesn't know what he's doing. Or even just hitting a dog, choking oh, a dog, punching bad, a dog, bad, abusing bad. a dog. That's I'm going to call that out. But we don't need to call out, we don't need to ban prong collars or e-collars or slip leads or crates or anything like that because oh. we're getting into an insane place right. but um may i jump in yeah of course we we as a rule at von Le kittles we're not e-collar people mm -hmm. but we actually teach it and the reason we teach it is because if we don't our students will leave us and go get with these guys and yeah. wherever yeah and they'll start showing me i do this and do that mm. and then when things go wrong they blame us yeah so we i i've never i've never used an e-collar to train a dog. Wow. Not saying there's nothing wrong with it, okay. but I can do everything you can do with a leash and choke chain. Sure. 
Now they say those are bad, but uh, of course, yeah. <laughs> um, but not saying, it, but I think it's a viable tool if yeah. they know how to use it. For sure, yeah, for sure, exactly. I agree with you. And it's any tool, it's any tool. Right. But um, I want to just circle back real quick on uh, to to wrap up on the pit bull thing. Did you have what? What did you like? Because I always look at dogs. I have a favorite. Obviously, I love Malinois and I like German Shepherds. Um, and there's things I love about pit bulls. And I, being in the shelter, I've seen so many amazing pit bulls. Mm-hmm. And people say, do you like pit bulls? It's not my look. I like the pointy-eared Malinois look. But some of the personalities I've seen in pit bulls were spectacular. Like just the most animated, happy-to-work, engaging, hard-driving dogs I've work seen. Work ethic. Work ethic. So, okay, that's, I want to ask you that question. Okay, that's my answer. And I don't mean to cut in. No. Since, since I had my thing... Uh, if I don't say something when it's up here, yeah, no, no. By the time I get around to it, it's gone. I haven't had a thing. I do the same thing. <laughs> Work ethic, okay, and and that's what I like about people. Mm-hmm. I love everybody, mm-hmm. but someone that's lazy. Mm-hmm. I love everybody, but someone that wants to feed off and and, and take over for someone else. A pit mm-hmm. bull, all he wants to do is be your buddy mm-hmm. and work. Yep. Give him something. Well, Malinois is the same way, sure. But you give him something to do, and that that big lug head. And his nose is amazingly good. Um, we loved him. Mm. We used him all the time. And even because there's a, you were talking about that you used pit bulls to track, um, and you said some of them track better than bloodhounds. Oh, they're amazing. I, I, you know, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. Who cares? But I, I run a very big kennel, and we sell a lot of dogs, and there are no bloodhounds in that kennel. Never oh. have been. Okay. Because well, the well, when the military when it started. Everybody thought that a Malama wouldn't track. You said that. They are the tracking the sons of bitches. You just got to understand they're prey oriented. Mm-hmm. And you can't do the old techniques of oogie boogie and run away mm-hmm. or, or go out and hide and give him a bite every time mm-hmm. because he's going to see him with his eyes and now he's going to use his eyes. But uh, yeah, I got a little bit different. I like working dogs. Uh, the, the, the pit bull, this flash, mm-hmm. he'd track you to the end of the earth. Wow. Through water. Cross pavement, he didn't care. In pavement, he didn't care. Wow. Um, so when they say that the longer the dog's nose is, the better it can track, that's BS. I'm not saying infinitesimally right, there right, might right, be right. a difference, sure. but that causes people to disregard a breed. Well, because it would be the, the break just the fat, like any dog with a scratched right, face. Right. But but no, it's like me. I don't, you know, I don't look like some kind of athlete, but I was at one time. Now right. I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> so uh no i don't i don't prejudge i i have my tests that tell me this dog can fit my program mm-hmm. and then if he does i don't care what he looks like we're doing yag terriers now you said that yeah oh my god robert yeah, you said that. if they were malinois you would not be able to handle crazy it. and so i like anything so there's a, there's a difference if you look at it, you got the hounds like a blood hound mm-hmm. the terrier is a total i mean i wouldn't think a terrier a terrier is a you know, but they're hunters. Right, they're hunters. And that's what we want. Oh, that's a good point. That's what they're we just want. using their nose. You know, hunt drive, we didn't understand hunt drive when I first came in the, into dogs. Mm-hmm. And now we do. And hunt drive is as important, if not more important, than prey. You know, sure. cocaine that doesn't run from you. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I've never found a bomb scooting across the living room. Mm. So if they don't have hunt, you know, you could train them with no prey. Mm-hmm. But you can't train them with no hunt. Okay. Interesting. Well, that's good information. I'm, I'm really fascinated by that with the pit bulls because I think pit bulls get a bad name, right? They do. They do get a bad name. And here's the thing I always say. I was, I was equated that Malinois are the pit bulls of, of the 2020s, right? Because yeah. they're yeah. really the same kind of temperament. They're work just ethic, they're tenacious, work ethic. tenacious. Yes. And they can be assholes. Oh, yes, they, they can. can be total assholes. Well, I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And sometimes more, and I think, you know, you see the pit bulls get that name because there's so many of them in the shelters, and they just you know. And the people that had them were the yeah. wrong people. Well, look, it happened with German Shepherds in yes. the '80s, and, and then the Dobermans, the Rottweilers. Every every popular breed has gotten to that point where they've gotten a bad name because bad people get them, bad people do bad things to them, and it's not black people or Hispanic people. No. Or Asian. It's it's just as many you know dumb white people doing bad <laughs> stuff that, that there's black people and Hispanic people. The people because people say that, and I've had that come down my life. Right, that's wrong. Yeah, it's dead wrong. Yeah. It's the person, not the color of their skin or their upbringing. It's their character Absolutely. of their skin, or the Absolutely. character of their, of their heart, like Martin Luther King said. So anyway, right. I love that. I love, love, love that about the pit bull. 